A rabbit joint is really the simplest of the mechanical joints. A rabbit, that's spelled with an E-T on the end, not an I-T like the little critter in your backyard. A rabbit is simply a cut made along the edge or the end of a workpiece that accepts a mating piece. Here in this little mock-up cabinet, the top has a rabbit along each end, and those rabbits fit the sides perfectly. There's a little bit of mechanical strength in that the shoulders on the rabbit help resist a little bit of racking if the cabinet gets knocked side to side, and of course the uh, resistance to downward pressure there too. So in addition to uh, typically you know, uh, fastening a cabinet top onto its sides, you can also wrap at the back of a cabinet to inset the panel for the back. On this drawer, we've got a real simple drawer front made with the rabbit in the drawer front that accepts the drawer sides. Nice thing about rabbits is they are very simple to cut and you can do them with a variety of tools. You can do it with a handheld router, you can do it on the router table, and you can do it on the table saw and I'll walk you through all those. We'll start with the handheld router. This router, I've got a special bit, it's called a rabbiting bit. You can see it's got the cutter on it and what's special about it is it's got this bearing down here. This bearing rides against the edge of the workpiece and the different diameter of the bearing and the cutting edge of the bit is the width of the rabbit. So, you can change out bearings by bits with different size bearings so you can cut rabbits of different widths. Let me show you how this works, it's really pretty simple. And you can see that half inch rabbiting bit makes a perfect fit for a mating piece of half inch MDF. Next method is to use, if you don't have a rabbiting bit like that, you have a straight bit in your bit cabinet. A straight bit can also be used to route a rabbit along the edge of a workpiece. The one thing you'll need to do though is add a way to guide the router. I'm going to change out the bits and we'll get set up for that. I've mounted a three quarter inch straight bit in the router now. And when you're routing a rabbit with a straight bit, you need some way to guide the router so that it just doesn't go dancing all across the panel, ruining the cut. With a rabbiting bit, you had the advantage of a built-in bearing that rides against the edge of the panel. With a straight bit, there's no such thing. So we need a uh, way to guide that bearing, guide that bit rather. And this simple jig is a very handy item to have in your shop. This is just a couple pieces of MDF. One of the top pieces of fence, and the bottom pieces of base. Glue and screw the fence to the base. You want to make the fence about a little wide so you can have enough room to, for clamps back here without interfering with the uh, base of the router. And the width of the base is determined by the distance from the cutting edge of the bit to the edge of your router base, two and a half inches in this case. So when I made this jig, I made it so it extended a little more than two and a half inches past the fence, call it two and five eighths. Then I took the router in my router bit in my router and I trimmed that edge so now I know exactly where that three-quarter inch bit is going to cut when I run the base of the router along that fence. One other advantage to using a straight bit to cut a rabbit is that you can cut a rabbit that is actually narrower than the bit. Even though this is a three-quarter inch bit, I'm going to cut a rabbit that fits three-quarter inch plywood. It's called three-quarter inch plywood, but it's always just a skosh under. So if you want a rabbit that fits that perfectly, you can do that with this method. Use the piece that's going to fit into the rabbit as a gauge, align it with the edge of the panel, and then just bring the jig right up to the other side. Check along the cut. When you've got the jig aligned, you want to just clamp it in place. Double check. That looks very good. And I'm ready to route this rabbit. So there is a rabbit that perfectly fits 
that three quarter inch plywood panel. Now you can also use the rabbiting bit and a straight bit on the router table. I'll show you that. To cut a rabbit with a straight bit, set the height of the bit for the depth of the rabbit, then measure from the outside edge of the bit to the fence to set the width of the rabbit, then lock the fence in place. Then just run the workpiece along the fence to cut the rabbit. When using a rabbiting bit on the router table, again set the bit height for the depth of the rabbit, then set the bearing flush with the fence faces. You can also cut a rabbit narrower than the rabbiting bit by simply moving the fence to bury more of the bit. To cut a rabbit on the table saw, you could use just a standard blade and make a whole bunch of repeat cuts uh, across the blade. That works. It does tend to leave a lot of score marks where each time the blade went past, you might have a score mark. A better way to do it is to get yourself a dado blade. This is a six inch dado blade. And it consists of a kind of a miniature, a six inch in diameter chipper. It goes on the outside. There's actually two of these when you fit them into the saw. And then there's a series of chippers that go between the two outside blades. And by stacking these together on the arbor, you come up with a much wider blade. It makes a wider cut. So by changing the number of chippers in there, you can vary the width of your cut. I've got this set up, kind of just an arbitrary number about about five eighths inch wide and I'll show you why I'm not too concerned about the actual width of the blade here in just a moment. Get this snug down. With a dado blade you're going to need a insert that has enough room for the blade to extend through. Now that I've got that set the next thing to consider is the width of my rabbit. In this case I'm going to take a piece of half inch MDF and make a rabbit that seats that MDF right in the edge of this plywood panel. I'm going to use the MDF itself as a gauge to set the width of my blade to the fence. You'll notice I've got an auxiliary fence clamped to my rip fence, and here's why. I need to raise the blade into that fence to bury part of it, so I'm only exposing exactly one half inch. So I'm going to lower the blade, bring it over so that auxiliary fence just covers the outside chipper, and then cut into it. Quick check, I've got it, it looks good. Set my blade height for the depth of the rabbit, three eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to position the rip fence so it exactly matches the width of the MDF. Just put the MDF next to there and using my fingers as a very sensitive gauge, I can tap the fence over until the outside of that tooth is perfectly flush with the face of the MDF. Feels like that's perfect. Okay, now with the width set, my height set, I'm ready to make a rabbit in my panel. And there you can see that half inch MDF fits perfectly in that rabbit. Edges are flush. Now I can even cut a wider rabbit without changing my setup too much, without changing the blade, simply by moving the fence over a little bit to expose more blade. Or if I need a narrower rabbit, 
push the fence toward the blade. You do want to be careful though that if you've got a blade that's about three quarters of an inch in width and your auxiliary fence is also three quarters of an inch in width, you're not getting too close to your metal fence and you cut into it.